my name's Gabriella, welcome to my channel where we talk about and do loads of creative things including lots of theatre. If you saw my recent video about my journey to getting into drama school, you'll know that earlier this year, before lockdown, I was doing a lot of student films. That's such a great way to get started as an actor, to get experience and network with upcoming filmmakers and you know, potentially the people that might be giving you jobs in the future. They're also great for getting footage together for a showreel or to put yourself forwards to agents with. And loads of film festivals have submissions from film schools. So if you end up doing student film, you might end up in a film festival, which is such amazing exposure. I managed to book six student films between January and March this year. It was four lead roles and two supporting roles. And I was pending on several more when lockdown happened. So that's all been a thing. But basically I was exposed very quickly to a lot to do with this. If I hadn't gotten into drama school now, then once lockdown was over, I would very definitely be continuing to pursue this like full on because it was such a good experience. I learned so much and I got so much out of it, would really recommend. So I'm basically sharing my experiences, what I've learned from my experiences, in hope that this helps other people who are maybe looking to get into acting. Um, and I know right now isn't ideal because you won't be able to put much of this into practice, but right now is the perfect time to be preparing so that as soon as everything's back up and running again, you are ready to go. So this will be a four part series, unless I come up with like more stuff to say, and I'll be covering like the overall how to actually get jobs, get them booked, um, how to go through and pick out what to actually apply for, like what things you should be looking for in job listings, what to expect once you've booked the job, so everything between booking it and actually turning up on the day and what to expect on the day, and then also how to get the most out of it. Today is the big old overview of how to book them. So keep in mind that casting calls will probably only be going out during term time, but always keep an eye out because you might get lucky, things might pop up around other times. So first option is if you live in like easy traveling distance of a film school or university that runs film courses, and that is to contact the university directly. Find contact details on the website for their course leader or course leaders um, and drop them an email. Let them know you're an actor starting out who would love experience working on their student films. If you've got any experience, you could briefly list what experience you do have. And would they be able to put you in touch with any of their students who are currently casting or will be casting in the future? Universities and university professors are not always the fastest at responding, so it might be worth a try of actually trying to approach film students directly if you're not hearing back very quickly. I would go through the university first and you can send follow-up emails after a couple weeks if you haven't heard anything. But for looking for students directly, Facebook is a good place to start. There's lots of student groups for courses and things, and often students will put out casting calls on Facebook as well. And often they have their own production companies. So if you manage to find the page for their production companies, you'll see what they're casting, when they're casting, when they have casting calls coming out, or you can drop them a message there. Very nicely ask them if they're casting, and if they're not, You'd be available in the future, but would they be able to let you know how you can get in touch with other people at the university on the course who are casting at the moment? If you do find an advert for a casting, then always include like a headshot and CV as an application. But if you're just reaching out to someone, um, you probably wouldn't need to include those. There's probably no harm in it, but you can always send it later. They'll be able to see your social media when you message them, if you're messaging them over social media, so they'll have something to go off already. If you don't have a lot on your CV, then it's probably not worth it. Just keep your social media clean. I started out trying to do this, but ended up using casting sites because by the time it got to the point where I was being put in touch with the right people at the university, I had already booked several jobs through casting sites and it didn't look like I was gonna be having a problem with getting them on casting sites. And I was already a little bit overwhelmed with what I was getting through, so, I decided I didn't really need a second source of getting student films. But I do know that getting in touch with courses directly is good because one of the films I was doing, the lead actor was a student at the same university on the acting course. And I think it was his third student film in two or three weeks, just because he knew the people at the university. So getting in with the people at the university can just be a really quick, easy access 
two castings. Depending on the production and everything, you may still be required to go through the usual casting process, but it's just a much more direct route to it. And obviously if you can get in with that group of people and people know you, then you're far more likely to be cast because it really is who you know. And if people can give you good recommendations to other people on their course, then people are probably more likely to go off their friends' good recommendations or if they've seen you in some of their peers' projects and liked it, then you're probably more likely to be able to use that connection. So, your second option, casting sites. So in the UK, student film castings are usually put on Mandy, Spotlight, Star Now and Backstage. I'm going to be talking about the process through Mandy, although it should be quite similar for all the others, but that's because Spotlight, you first of all need requirements to be able to join like a certain amount of professional credits and things, and all of them require fees for you to be able to join and access all the castings. Mandy is the only one where basically they have an opportunities board, which is projects which pay less than £80 a day, which virtually every student film falls under because they have teeny tiny budgets and sometimes the universities don't even make them budget in or give them money to be able to actually pay actors. Like the majority of ones I've done, the travel expenses that we got covered were straight out of the students' pockets um, and if we did get a fee as well, that was often out of the students' own pockets as well um, the university didn't always cover it. But yeah, basically this opportunities board um, it's absolutely free to apply for anything on there on Mandy. So it's the only site where you can apply for student films for free. So get your account set up. You'll need a headshot and a CV. I can do separate videos on those if people are interested. But the basics, headshot, portrait, so this way photo of your head and shoulders. Don't go over the top with makeup. Make sure your face can be really clearly seen. So like no hair covering your face and against a plain background, well lit as well. For CVs, just include whatever you can classes, experience, um, school shows and things. Don't worry if you don't have too much or even anything because we can make up for it with cover letters when we actually get to the actual applications. So when you have an account set up, start looking through the actual opportunities. Make sure that you check the, the roles are a distance away that you don't mind traveling because while travel expenses are usually covered, sometimes that's only up to a certain amount or within a certain distance that they'll cover. And also you might need to travel that distance really early in the morning or really late at night. As well as that, they might be doing in-person auditions, in which case you're gonna have to travel that distance there and back and that won't be reimbursed regardless of whether you get the role or not. So once you've picked the roles that you're gonna apply for, and this should be a reoccurring thing, I was checking pretty much every single day and I was applying for at least one job most days. You attach your headshot and CV and then you need to write a cover letter. This should basically just explain which role or roles you're applying for, what you like about the project. It's always nice to compliment the casting director a little bit and show a genuine interest in the project as well. A little bit about your experience and then also something on your availability and location. So the bit about your experience is important because if you don't have much on a CV or you don't have a CV at all, this is where you need to make up for it. You can be really honest and say that you are brand new to this and just starting out because they're all students as well. They're pretty much in the same place. They are just starting out as well. They will sympathize for the most part. And also they can't afford much for actors, so most of the people applying anyway are just starting out. Most of their applications are probably from people much in the same boat as you. So don't worry, just make whatever you've done sound as good as possible and in about a sentence, because that's the other thing. You don't wanna be telling them your whole life story. They don't have time for that. But my standard cover letter sort of thing that I used was four sentences long, plus like, dear whoever, and thank you very much for your time kind of thing at the top and end. And it was basically one sentence for each of the things I mentioned, and that was it. But yeah, they may not always look at your CV or cover letter. Sometimes, quite often, if they don't have a lot of responses, they'll just send out auditions to everyone. They'll just ask everyone who applies to audition, or if they've got loads and loads of people applying, then they'll probably just look at headshots first. So it's probably only in if you're in the middle that they'll probably pay like be really scrutinizing what you've put down so don't worry too much about it and also before you send off your application make sure that they haven't included in their post sides for you to send in an audition tape like 
when you apply. I only saw this about twice over the three or four months that I was applying for, so it doesn't happen that often, but just make sure you read the whole post through and see exactly what they want you to do. Then my advice is just to completely forget that you ever applied for this role. The general way that it goes is that unless they're interested in you coming in for an audition, they won't message you. So don't pin your hopes on it and just go on with life. Then on the off chance that you do hear back, this varies for everyone. I found I was hearing back from about a quarter of all the submissions that I did. I know for other people that was a lot less or sometimes it's more. And it'll usually be a self tape, but there's quite a lot of in-person auditions as well that they'll ask you to do. If you can't make it to the in-person audition, don't panic. And also don't panic if they state in the listing that there's an in-person audition that you can't do because nine times out of 10, if they invite you in for an audition and you can't make that day, or it's just a bit tricky getting there, don't say that though, just say you can't do that day. They will usually either reschedule for you or allow you to send in a self tape nine times out of 10. Don't take it as like a granted that they'll do it. Be very nice and polite and everything. But nine times out of 10, if they want you to come in for an audition, they'll either let you come in at a time that's more convenient to you or they'll let you do a self tape. All you need to do is ask. But anyway, regardless of which one you do, you should get sent a section of the script to perform. If it's in person, learn those lines as best as you possibly can and make sure you've taken on board any stage directions. And then when you get there, be prepared to take on direction and make changes to how you do it. Don't have it set in your mind. This is how I see it. This is the only way that I'm gonna do it. Be flexible. If it's a self tape, record landscape of your head and chest, so kind of to about your waist. With good lighting on a plain background, make sure they can see your face as well. Phone quality is absolutely fine. Read lines with someone else stood behind the camera, just to the side, so you can look at them or look somewhere else if you want, but look, don't look directly at the camera, look slightly to one side or the other. If you don't have someone in person to read lines for you, you could get someone to Skype in behind the camera to talk the lines to you. There's also quite a few apps out there that I think people use as a very last resort. You could do the lines as a monologue, but if there's a lot of lines for the other person, I would not recommend this. Once you've filmed it, I would always advise doing a quick little edit to it, if you can, just to make it look all neat and tidy. By that, I mean in the video, just create a little slide, like a little title card before the footage starts that says your name, the name of the project, and what role you're applying for. If you've been given multiple scenes, you can then include another title before each scene saying like scene one, scene two, etc. Sometimes they'll ask you to do a slate. Like for most auditions, like in the professional world, you usually should do a slate, I've been told. But for student films, most of them will not care um, and having a title card will be fine. If you do get asked to do a slate, they'll usually specify if they want you to say anything other than your name and what you're applying for. And you can put that in place of like the title card or you could do both if you wanna just, you know, make it very clear and sure. And then upload it to something like Google Drive, Dropbox, or an unlisted YouTube or Vimeo video account. Something where they don't need to download the video file to be able to see it. And reply to the message with the link to wherever you've uploaded the self-tape. Try and do this as soon as possible. Even if they've given you a deadline that's like ages away, get it in as soon as possible because they might get other applications in first, see those, make their mind up already before you've got yours in and then just change the deadline. And then again, try forget that you've even applied for it. Usually if you've sent in a self tape or been to an audition, there's about an 80% chance they'll actually let you know whether you've got the role or not. I mean, if you get it, obviously you're here, but if you haven't, they don't always let you know. They just leave you, but don't pester them about it unless it's getting really close to the filming date or your deadline for when you have to ask work for time off kind of thing, if that's something that you have to do. Usually there's only one round of auditions for student films, but I have heard of some people doing more rounds or possibly an interview, so be prepared for that. But otherwise, this should be when you find out whether you've got the job or not and you start getting filming schedules and things. If you do have any questions about the project, their filming schedules, etc., you can message them with these questions. Anytime from when they ask you to come in for an audition till the filming date, just don't 
send loads and loads and really pester them. And that's where I'm gonna leave it today. I hope this has helped anyone thinking of trying to get into acting through student films. It really is such a great way to get experience and everything I said at the beginning, basically. This was purely my experience. It'll be different for everyone. And especially at a time like this where everything's so uncertain, but I hope this has helped you in some way at least. And even though you can't actually be applying right now, there is still a lot you can be doing from like prepping your CV, headshots, all those sorts of things. I have made a video um, called how to work in your acting in lockdown or something along those lines, maybe an acting career. Can't quite remember what I called my own video. Oh well. But I just went through loads of different things you can be doing right now to work on your acting career. So if you want more ideas of things to do, go check that out. And then once this is all over, you will be in top notch position to be ready to take the world by storm. So as always, if you've got any questions about anything I've said, let me know below. If you've done any student films, I would also love to hear, swap stories, share experiences, we'll have fun. And I'm doing a lot of videos right now, like I don't have much else to do with my time. So if you wanna subscribe so you know when my next videos come out, that would be really cool. But otherwise, I hope you're staying safe and hopefully see you in a new video really soon. Okay, bye.